गुड आफ्टरनून डियर स्टूडेंट्स नमस्कार यू ऑल आर वॉचिंग प्रधानमंत्री ई विद चैनल नंबर टेन एंड अवर यूट्यूब चैनल एन सी आर टी ऑफिशियल एंड आई एम कुसुम प्रसाद सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे क्लास टेन स्टूडेंट्स आर गोइंग टू स्टडी सोशल साइंस एंड द टॉपिक इज नेशनलिज्म इन इंडिया पार्ट वन सो टू टीच दिस सब्जेक्ट अवर एक्सपर्ट इज श्री अमित कुमार ठाकुर सर नमस्कार सर यू आर वेरी वेलकम इन दिस सेशन नमस्कार टू ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स देयर पेरेंट्स एंड माय फेलो टीचर्स हु आर वाचिंग दिस प्रोग्राम वी वेलकम यू ऑल यस सर इज लेक्चर इन हिस्ट्री गवर्नमेंट को एड सीनियर सेकेंडरी स्कूल ई ब्लॉक वेस्ट विनोद नगर दिल्ली सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स बिफोर वी स्टार्ट अवर टूडे सेशन लेट मी टेल यू अबाउट ऑल अवर वेरियस मीडियम्स वेयर यू कैन कॉन्टेक्ट अस यू कैन सेंड योर फीडबैक्स यू कैन कॉल अस ऑन अवर फोन नंबर दैट इज एट You can also email us on our email ID that is dth dot class ten at the rate cit dot nic dot in. Apart from this, you can also drop your messages, send your feedbacks on our YouTube channel that is NCRT official. So let's start our session and we move to our expert, Mr. Amit Kumar. Ji sir, uh, sir, my very first question is, sir, uh, we are going to study nationalism. So what is the meaning of nationalism, sir? Okay, dear students. let us start our discussion on today's topic and you know today's topic is nationalism in india the very first question the very obvious question the very relevant question is what is nationalism what do you understand by nationalism generally people believe that uh, nationalism has a very simple meaning but it is not so it has a very complex meaning it has very deep rooted meaning uh generally people confuse nationalism with uh, patriotism but these two terms are not similar there is a subtle difference between these two terms uh patriotism means loving one's nation if you love your nation then uh, you are a patriot but what is nationalism to explore the meaning of nationalism and to understand its definition let us go to the university of sorbonne where in 1882 a french philosopher ernest renan was trying to explain the meaning of nationalism he was rejecting all the ideas all the notions that some peoples were having that nationalism uh, to form a nation uh, uh, a common language or a common religion or a common race or a common territory is required he rejected all this idea so what was nationalism according to ernest renan ernest renan was trying to explain and trying to define nationalism in an entirely new words he said that a nation is the culmination of a long past of endeavors sacrifices and devotion a heroic past great men glory all these are the social capital upon which one bases a national idea to have common glories in the past to have a common will in the present to have performed great deeds together to uh, to wish to wish to perform such things still more in future these are the essential conditions that are required for being a people or a nation a nation is therefore a large scale solidarity all this has been said by arnest renan and it means that the feeling of that solidarity is the nationalism so yeah, i think uh, you have understood all what was said by um, Ernest Renan, but to make you further clear, I am trying to explain it in my own words. Ernest Renan, whatever, uh, whatever said, whatever was said by Ernest Renan, that is uh, uh, that can be translated into a very simple word. Nationalism is the feeling of solidarity among a group of people. If a group of people is having a sense of commonness. a sense of belongingness a sense of oneness then that group of people can be called a nation the solidarity is the 
foremost requirement of being a nation by a group of people. So after having understood what Renan was trying to say, now I will give you an example to make the idea further clear to you. Uh, suppose there are two groups of people. One is a team, a team for example, a cricket team, a football team, a volleyball team or whatever. And the other group of people was, uh, uh, the other, other people of, uh, the other uh, group of people is, uh, uh, you may say that uh, co-passengers, co-passengers who are traveling in the same coach. So we are going to compare these two group of people to understand the meaning of nationalism. So first of all, let us talk about the team. That is the team, uh, for example, a cricket team. So what do you, under, what do you uh, know about a team? What are the features of a team? Don't you think the team members have solidarity? Don't you think they have a feeling of commonness? Don't you think they have the feeling of oneness? Don't you think the joy of one member is the joy of all other members of the team? Don't you think the sorrow of one member is the sorrow of all other members of the team? Don't you think the victory of one member is the victory of all other members of the team? Don't you think the defeat of one member is the defeat of all other members of the team? So it means that team is having a solidarity, a feeling of commonness, a feeling of oneness. So this team can be equated to a nation. So therefore, a nation is nothing else but a team which has a solidarity. The defeat of one member of nation is the defeat of entire nation. The victory of one member of the nation is the victory of all the members of the nation. So team is, uh, so a nation is nothing but a team. And the feeling of solidarity among the members of the team is at only a small scale. But when this solidarity is seen at a large scale, that solidarity is called nationalism. So I think you, it is now clear what is a nation and what is nationalism. And, and let us talk about that uh, group of co-passengers who are traveling in the same rail coach. All of them are sitting together, all of them are moving in the same direction, and all of them are going to the same destination. But can you uh, say that they are a team? No, they are not team because they don't have any solidarity. They don't share a common past. Their heroes are not common. The sorrow of one co-passenger is not the sorrow of all the other co-passengers. The victory of one co-passenger is not the victory of all other co-passengers. There is no cooperation among them. There is no coordination among them. There is no common objectives uh, they feel. So it is said, so it is clear that uh, a nation is a big team. A team member have solidarity at a small scale, but a nation has the solidarity at a large scale. And that solidarity at large scale is called nationalism. बिल्कुल सर बहुत ही बढ़िया आपने डेफिनेशन बताई और हमारे जो स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स हमें देख रहे हैं ज़रूर इसके अगर नोट्स बनाएंगे तो उनके लिए बहुत हेल्पफुल रहेगा तो सर हम बात करते हैं कि नेशनलिज्म इन इंडिया की बात करें तो मेरा ये नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन है इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ इमरजेंस ऑफ नेशनलिज्म इज द सिमिलर इन ऑल द कंट्रीज सर Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I will answer this question also, but I will also, uh, I want to ask, uh, I want to say something else also. Uh, for example, take an example that uh, Team India, for example, Cricket Team of India, for example, Hockey Team of India, or uh, any team of India wins a match. So, what is the feeling among all the Indians? The, all the Indians throughout the length and breadth of the country feel elated they feel victorious, they fall into jubilation. Why? Because they think, they realize, they feel that this victory is their own. That medal won by any player in the Olympic or any Commonwealth game, they, uh, they feel that this medal belongs to them. So when this type of feeling is there among a group of people, that feeling is called nationalism and the people having such a feeling are called a nation. 
yes ma'am i am i am coming to your second question uh, next uh, uh, important question that might be cropping up in your mind is that is the process of emergence of nationalism same similar in all the countries so dear student it is not it is not same because uh, different countries have experienced different processes and different uh, they, sh they have different experiences in the emergence of nationalism take for example europe in modern uh, modern nationalism in europe is associated with uh, formation of nation state it also belong it also related to the change in understanding of people of who they were and what was their identity what was their sense of belonging so in europe there are i, I will see you a very important slide yes in the europe formation of nation state was the basis of nationalism it meant a change in people's understanding of what they are and what was their uh, what was their identity and what was their sense of belongingness in europe we saw new symbols and icons new songs and ideas forged new links and redefined the boundaries of the communities in most countries the making of this new national identity was a long process so now it is clear how nationalism emerged in europe now we will talk about the emergence of nationalism in india how nationalism emerged in india can you say so dear student nationalism in india emerged as a anti colonial struggle by the people of india in india as in vietnam and many other colonies the growth of modern nationalism is intimately connected to the anti colonial movement people began discovering their unity in the process of their struggle with colonialism mind you here you can see the very difference between the processes of emergence of nationalism in europe and in uh, india in europe nationalism emerged due to the formation of nation states and in and in india nationalism is emerging due to the uh, anti colonial movement by the people of india the sense of being oppressed under colonialism provided a shared bond that tied many different groups together but each class and groups felt the effect of colonialism differently their experiences were varied and their notions of freedom were not always the same the congress under mahatma gandhi tried to forge these groups together within one movement so now dear student you can be asked a question in examination that compare the processes of emergence of nationalism in europe and india similarly you can be asked a question uh, compare the nature of nationalism in europe and in india and i think by having a uh, discussion at length over on these both the on both these topics now you are able to answer both these questions now we move forward now i am showing you a picture uh, this picture is a procession procession that was carried on on 6th april 1919 this uh, this mass procession on the streets became a common feature during the national movement so now you can understand very easily that emergence of nationalism in india was due to national movement and this type of pictures were very uh, common during this national movement so people are coming out of their homes they are they are uh, assembling on the streets they are marching towards uh, the police station or any government building they are pressing their demands so a uh, solidarity is emerging between these peoples and this solidarity is uh, is actually the nationalism so nationalism in india emerged in the national movement during the national movement so this is the difference between the nationalism in india and nationalism in europe 
the process of emergence of nationalism is entirely different in national in uh, europe and in india so dear students uh, you you must be knowing that we cannot uh, study history of a country in isolation history of a country is affected by the events that are unfolding in the other parts of the uh, world so similarly if we want to study the national movement in india we first of all try to understand what uh, were the in, uh, important international events during that period and i would also uh, i would also recall you that in class 8th you studied uh, the growth of national movement up to uh, up to the first decade of 19th century uh, 20th century and in this class 10th in this chapter we are going to pick up the story from the second decade of this uh, uh, 20th century and especially from 1920s so during that period what was happening in the world that was affecting indian national movement also so there was a very great event very important event in the world which has affected nationalism in india also and that what was that uh, what was that event that event was the first world war so before we enter into the national movement of india first of all we would try to find out the impact of the first world war on india and india's economy because that affected people of india that affected the leaders of india and that led growth of nationalism in india so we are going to understand what were the impacts of nash of first world war in india and uh, mind you this question can be asked in your examination so we are going to understand the first world war and india the its impact the first world war created a new economic and political situation it led a huge increase in defense expenditure which was financed by war loans and increasing taxes customs duties were raised and income tax introduced it means government was increasing taxes just to finance its war expenditure and the burden is on the common men of india the people of india they were they were uh, dying uh, under the uh, huge pressure huge burden of taxes the rate of inflation was rapidly rising the prices became double between 1913 and 1918 leading to extreme hardship for the common people so common people was uh, uh, rattling because of increase in taxes and because of rising prices and another another difficulty for common men was that villages were called upon to supply soldiers and the forced recruitment in rural areas caused wide spread anger the young people were forcibly recruited in the army to fight in, on the foreign fronts uh, in 1918-19 and 1920-21 crops failed in many parts of india resulting in acute shortage of food so it means all uh, uh, all the difficult all the difficulties were <laughs> creating at the same time to the people of india this was accompanied by an influenza epidemic all types all sorts of problems were uh, were uh, uh, the indian people were facing at that time according the according to the census of 1921 12 to 13 million people perished as a result of famine and epidemic so you can see that this first world war was uh, badly impacting indian economy india and the people of india so they all the people were dissatisfied with the government and they wanted that some great leader should come and rescue these all the people of india and their wait uh, was going to be over soon because on the horizon we we saw the coming of a great leader and who was that leader yes dear children he 
he was none other than but our beloved Mahatma Gandhi and he and this great leader suggested a new mode of struggle also. So from 1920s we are going to witness a situation where a new leader is there to lead the national movement and this leader is offering a very new, a very unique mode, a very unique mode of struggle and that unique mode of struggle was Gandhiji's famous Satyagraha. So we are going to study about what is Satyagraha, the idea of Satyagraha. Uh, the picture on your monitor is clearly showing that there is some people are doing Satyagraha, there is a, there is a profession but this is not an Indian picture, this picture is from South Africa. Because before coming to uh, India, Gandhiji lived uh, for a long time in South Africa also and there also he struggled with the racist government uh, by using his famous weapon that is Satyagraha. This picture is showing that Mahatma Gandhi was leading the workers from Newcastle to Transvaal when the marches were stopped and Gandhiji arrested thousands of more workers joined the Satyagraha against racist laws and denies right to non-whites. So dear student it means Satyagraha is not a new weapon of, uh, for Gandhiji. Gandhiji had already used this weapon in South Africa. So let us talk about, let us try to understand what is this Satyagraha all about. The idea of Satyagraha. This is again a very very important area where, on which you can be asked a question in examination. So it is very important for you to understand what is the idea of Satyagraha. The idea of Satyagraha emphasized the power of truth and the need to search for truth. It suggested that if the cause was true, if the struggle was against injustice, then physical force was not necessary to fight the oppressor. It means Satyagraha doesn't use the physical force, it uses the moral force. Without seeking vengeance or being aggressive, a Satyagrahi could win the battle through non-violence. This could be done by appealing to the conscience of the oppressor. People including the oppressors had to be persuaded to see the truth instead of being forced to accept truth through the use of violence. It means Satyagraha emphasizes on change of the heart of the oppressor. The oppressor himself or herself realized that he is doing, uh, his, his, what he is doing is not good, is not right and he changes his course of action uh, voluntarily. This is the force of Satyagraha. This is the uh, gist of Satyagraha. By this struggle, truth was bound to ultimately triumph. It means that is why we are called, uh, we, we, uh, we usually call Satya Mev Jayate. So Satyagraha, uh, because, because of Satyagraha, truth was bound to ultimately triumph. Gandhiji believed that this dharma of non-violence could unite all Indians. So dear student, it is also very important if we uh, if we hear the story from the horse mouth. So it will be very interesting if we know what is Satyagraha by the, uh, by the mouth of Gandhiji himself. So let us talk what Gandhiji had to say about Satyagraha. It is very important and uh, in, the, uh, in examination there will be competency based question and competency based question will be asked on the sources given in your uh, textbook. So this is a source A that is given in your, so in your, uh, in your textbook. You must read it very uh, thoroughly because these questions, the competency based questions will be asked on these sources. So let us say, uh, le so let us see what Gandhiji had to say about uh, this Satyagraha. It is said of passive resistance that it is the weapon of the weak, but the power but the power which is the subject of this article can be used only by the strong. So here Gandhiji is outrightly rejecting that Satyagraha is not the weapon of the weak, but it is the weapon of the strong. 
and similarly gandhi ji also uh, denying that satyagraha is a passive resistance he said no this is not a passive resistance it is an active resistance this power is not passive resistance indeed it calls for intense activity the movement in south africa was not passive but active satyagraha is not physical force gandhi ji is clearly telling that satyagraha is not the physical force a satyagrahi does not inflict pain on the adversary he does not seek his destruction in the use of satyagraha there is no ill will whatever no ill will whatever satyagraha is pure soul force truth is the very substance of this soul that is why this force is called satyagraha so this force is called satyagraha because its basis is the truth the soul is informed with knowledge in it buries the flame of love non violence is the subject supreme dharma and finally gandhi ji is telling you that why he was emphasizing on non violence it is certain that india cannot rival britain or europe in force of arms the british warships warships the war god and they can all of them become as they are becoming bearer of arms the hundreds of millions in india can never carry arms they have made the religion of non violence their own so dear children now it is clear why gandhi ji was focusing was emphasizing on non violence because gandhi ji knew that indians couldn't compete with british or european people in arms so the uh, the right strategy for indians can be non violence yes sir i mean sir thank you so much you beautifully explained this chapter nationalism in india and this is very important uh, chapter from the point view of exam because Jee. so many questions are asked from this chapter thank you so much sir for this uh, session thank you students thank you so and much. thank you viewers for watching us thank you so dear students and learners uh, this was a uh, session of social science uh, so we wrap up of this session you don't go anywhere there is lot more coming up so stay stay tuned for uh, pradhan mantri vidya channel our youtube channel ncrt official namaskar